In this video I'll be showing you how I made this drum sander. The design is based off a few I've seen online and a key feature I wanted to include was a motorised conveyor belt to pull the material through. The first thing to make was a table part in the conveyor to see if I can make it work. The surface is made from two boards of 18mm birch plywood and I routed a slot for the pivot rod before gluing them together. The plywood wasn't terribly flat so to encourage the boards to remain so after gluing I clamped them together with some flat boards. I then made the sides. For adjusting the tension and tracking of the belt, the ends of the sides have a groove cut into them with their router bit. I cut the matching tongues using the same router bit. Although right away I ran into a problem. It turned out the router could have tapered groove into the sides. It turns out this plywood wasn't flat either. So I cut the grooves a little wider, using some push blocks to make sure the wood was flat against the table. After some fiddling to get the cut right, I routed the tongue into a long strip. This was then cut into chunks, drilled for the adjusting rod, and drilled for the bearings. And then had a threaded rod epoxied into them for adjusting. I hadn't really thought too far ahead when routing the grooves into the sides, and made it harder for myself to drill the hole for the adjusting rods. So I routed the groove further and cut some lumps to fill the gaps. For attaching the sides, I used some rods and shims to get them lined up vertically, and then used a square on the pivot rod to get them lined up horizontally. And then screw holes were drilled. To make sure I can get them back in the same place after removing them, a piece of dial was used as a locating pin. This was trimmed flush from a handcrafted Japanese pull saw. I put some threaded inserts in for locking the table. I also varnished and scraped the table to reduce friction with the conveyor belt. The first attempt for the rollers was making them out of MDF. This left an undulated surface that I couldn't get smooth. The second idea was to soak the MDF in something to harden it. Dilute varnish might have worked, but it would have taken a long time to dry and smelled awful. So I tried dilute PVA glue and dried it on the radiator. I'm glad I thought to wax the metal since it heavily rusted where it wasn't protected. This didn't work though. The MDF cracked a lot as it dried, and it didn't do anything to make it turn better. So instead I cut a bunkle of plywood squares, which turned a lot better, even if there was a few chip outs. I sounded a bit of a crown into the rollers to hopefully make them track better. For the conveyor I'm using a sanding belt. I was thinking of using proper conveyor belt material at first, but I couldn't find any for sale or any good information on how to splice them. I'm lucky that a stock belt size just happened to be exactly right for the sander, well circumference wise at least. Start to be trimmed. Tracking is adjusted with these screws, but I didn't bother to get tracking or tension properly for this test since it was going to be taken apart in the future. The conveyor is going to be driven with a car windscreen wiper motor at 12 volts. Mostly going by some pulse width modulation speed controller diagrams I found online. Although you can buy motor controllers on eBay and they're probably cheaper than trying to make one this way. I tried a few circuits out until I found one I liked. Having an oscilloscope is nice for this sort of thing. After getting the circuit working, I then made an even uglier hard copy on some perf board. The sides of the body were cut using a variety of tools. The paper templates are really handy for this sort of thing. Matthias Wandel sells a program that makes producing them fairly easy. The base was cut and had a rabbit to write into it. Some struts were also cut from spruce. These were only screwed in since I wanted to be able to remove them. The sides were glued and screwed to the base. So 
studs were epoxied into the holes for the pivot flanges. The drum was made similar to the conveyor rollers, only bigger. The 20mm spade bit I had was a fair bit undersized, so I made this rubbish ream by hacksawing into a bit of the same rod as the drum spindle. The two end discs on either side weren't glued and were screwed on so I could take them off after turning. Two bearing flanges were made using a hole cutter I'd made. The bearings were epoxied in. I also made a pulley using a questionable setup on the router table. I wouldn't recommend doing it this way. It would probably be better to make a rough pulley to turn a fancy one on the spindle. An angle grinder was used to cut a rough keyway into the spindle. Wrong way, idiot. There's a lot of overhang when cutting this way though, and I still don't think it's ideal. Especially not with a chisel. I took a few measurements to make sure the rest was parallel to the drum spindle, as well as at the same distance. And then turned it round. The ends were then removed and had a part cut out. The trapezoidal inserts were used to hold the ends of the sandpaper in place. Most of the big things are done now, but there's still a lot of little things to finish off before it can run. I was saving this giant motor for a bandsaw, but being the only motor I have, I ended up using it on this. It just barely fits into the space available, and had to be mounted sideways so the stuff on top didn't get in the way of the table. It sits on a hinged platform for adjusting the belt tension. I made a pair of knobs for holding the table on, as well as some elongated washers. An idea borrowed from one of Walter's thickness stander to prevent the knobs wearing down the wood over time. I get a lot of questions about why I don't use an electric screwdriver, and this is my answer. Then after checking the table was square to the sides, and with the drum resting on the table, I screwed in the bearing flanges. And then made the dust shroud using spines to strengthen it. I also made a quick belt guard. With the thing disassembled, I took the opportunity to paint it the only colours I had. A bar was added to the bottom of the table assembly for a height adjustment screw to push against. And the height adjustment screw was made. There's no kind of calibration, and it's only for making small adjustments easier. Rob Wilson gave me a bunch of V-belts since the one I had wasn't long enough. They were narrower than the pulleys I'd made, and this gave me an opportunity to machine some nicer ones. I came out just the right size and needed to be heated up to expand the metal and fit them on. The drum wasn't entirely flat, so in preparation for sanding it true I lowered the pivot flanges. The drum was then sanded flat. And after that it was varnished. I'm going to be using some spray adhesive to help hold the sandpaper on, and I'm hoping the varnish makes it easier to remove than if it was bare wood. Once the varnish was dry, I then sanded it smooth with fine sandpaper. While I was waiting for the varnish to dry, I'd made this box to house the electronics. I'd also made this piece for attaching the conveyor belt motor. I 
To couple the motor to the roller, I tried a few methods. The first was to directly couple the trying to drill some accurate holes in the drill press, which didn't work out so well. The next idea was to couple it using a bit of garden hose, using epoxy to hold the motor end at first, which broke. So eventually I used a pair of hose clamps. To lock the main motor in place, I made some stout angle blocks. This really cut down on vibrations, but didn't totally eliminate them. I then wired everything up, making sure to use parts I could handle a load of everything. Next was wrestling with the sandpaper. By wrapping it around and marking where it touches itself at the end, I was able to get the liner where to cut it. The first piece I cut wasn't long enough, but I could use the end of that to mark where to cut the opposite end at least. Then with the next piece I found that the two end retainers didn't line up. Oh no. The solution to that was just repositioning the end block. While I was thinking about it, I probably just wound on the paper in the wrong direction to begin with. The retainers holding the ends might have been enough to hold the paper on. Commercial sanders use that system, but I didn't want to risk the paper flying off and causing a mess. So I used a little bit of spray adhesive too. Letting it dry a bit until it was just tacky should hopefully make it easier to remove. The dust hood and belt guard were then attached to finish the sander off. I built this dust collector a while ago, it's still not finished but I could use it to test the sander. And right away I learned a lesson. Turns out small pieces don't sand too well, glad I was standing out of the way. I had less problems sanding a wider board. I think to sand small parts it would be a good idea to attach them to a larger board first. And that's the sander more or less complete. It took a lot longer to make than I expected but so far it seems to be doing an alright job. One problem I've noticed so far is that the speed controller MOSFET gets quite hot when running for a while, so I need to sort out some decent cooling for it if I ever need to run the sander for a long time. But aside from that, I've not noticed any other problems so far. I guess time will tell. Anyways, thanks for watching.